Hey guys, it's Bina and in today's video, I want to go over the Lightning Swarm Blade build guide. This is an extremely good build, one of the best in the game at the moment. So I'd say it's an S tier build that you, uh, you are a melee character, which have a lot of damage, a lot of CC and a lot of EHP and sustain. So yeah, overall, everything that makes this build uh, be an absolute powerhouse in Last Epoch. Uh, basically, you, you transform into a Swarm Blade, which is kind of an insect or bug, and use Arm Blade Slash, which is your melee ability. And those, those melee attacks will proc tornadoes on you. So you're kind of like a walking hurricane, and those tornadoes cast lightning at monsters around you, and those lightnings stun them and deal an incredibly high amount of damage. So it's basically, you're a melee character, but you scale lightning and spell damage. You can face tank, you got high damage, no mana issues because you're scaling crit and you get rage on crit. So as you can see, uh, you never have to worry about like your resources and you get free dodge scaling out of every single attack that you do. So um, because your arm blade slash will use the serpent strike tree, there's a note in there that gives you multiplicative dodge rating. Uh, on each use of of, uh, of melee attacks that you do in the past four seconds. Because you attack so fast, you get up to 85% dodge absolutely for free. So these are all the good sides. Uh, there's a couple downsides. You have like kind of limited AoE. You can't really like hit monsters far away. You have low mobility. It's not the fastest build in the game, but it's still, it's still pretty good. Uh, you have to like manage your companion. Uh, with gear, we try to uh, circumvent that in a way that you basically heal your companion as often as you as you can by killing enemies with your melee attacks. Um, although it's not, you know, sometimes he will still die and you'll have to revive him. But um, yeah, that's just part of the build. And then, you know, melee kind of suffers against certain enemies. So let's go into everything that makes this build tick. Like how to play, tips and tricks, um, the gear, the passives, and everything that you need to know to be able to be successful with the Lightning Swarm Blade. All right, let's go over the skills. We're using Swarm Blade Form, Tornado, Maelstrom, Serpent Strike, and Summon Spriggan. In Swarm Blade Form, what you're essentially trying to make, uh, what you're trying to do is cast a lot of tornadoes with your melee attacks. So that's why you're using these two nodes here. And this more multiplier from Howling Cascade uh, from Army of the Tempest will apply after all of the more multipliers in Tornado. So this essentially is giving us 80% more damage with every single hit uh, that our tornadoes cast. And the lightnings that are uh, cast from tornadoes, they also benefit from all the more multipliers from the tree. So that is why it's, a, it's like super important to grab them all. Uh, for rage, for rage sustain, we have endless pressure and we have needle like sting and grasshopper frenzy. So every single kill, hit on boss or rare, and hit on like, and um, you get range on crit as well. That's why we're increasing our base crit chance with Needle Like Sting, as well as other things that we'll get here. So we have 8% base crit in our Summon Spriggan as well. But um, yeah, essentially getting your base crit as high as possible to not have to utilize too much increased crit to cap your crit is very important. We have Viper Skull here. Uh, Viper Skull lets you use Serpent Strike Tree with every single Swarm Blade melee attack. So you're using this one essentially to get a lot of dodge rating. This one is a multiplicative dodge rating per use of 12%. So it, it allows you to get to 85% dodge super easily uh, just by scaling attack speed. You get a kill threshold, killing monsters uh, once they reach 18%. You get attack speed here, armor shred. Remember, you want to get up to oh, at least 100 armor shred stacks super fast. And then we grab these nodes just to get to Shroud of Winter to get a little bit of like flat dodge to be able to scale it uh, much better and reach 85% easier. So that is the, the, the reason for Viper Skull. Uh, Water Strider, essentially each time when we dive, you'll be able to um, cast a number of stacks of Maelstrom. Maelstrom gives you haste, it gives you frenzy, so movement speed. Frenzy gives you more attack speed. You're getting dodge rating, flat dodge, and you're getting a lot of stun chance. Um, so essentially you're gonna be a stun lock machine Walking fast, attacking fast with like a lot of dodge. So all good things for the build. And the last points that we put here are in attack speed, uh, just to be able to scale everything else much better. Tornado, we're grabbing the lightnings, right? This is our main damage. And then we're grabbing the movement speed, attack speed here, all of the more multipliers. And then we're grabbing also churning orb, 
which is essentially this is only a way to apply more hits to reach higher armor shred stacks. Um, keep in mind the Eye of the Storm, this says can no longer cast additional tornadoes. This only means that it cancels this double cast chance node here. You will still be able to stack multiple tornadoes on you uh, as you are in Swarm Blade form and you proc them with your super fast attack speed. So you have multiple tornadoes casting a ton of lightnings and all of that multiplied by your more multiplier in Swarm Blade form. This is why this build is so powerful. Um, so yeah, that is pretty much it for Tornado. Uh, we already talked about Maelstrom giving us multiple benefits. Uh, we already talked about Serpent Strike. So let's go about Summon Spriggan. The Spriggan is here to give you... So you're essentially a melee build, but you're scaling the lightning damage, right? And those lightnings, they, they, uh, they scale with spell, lightning, and attunement. So the more flat light, the more flat spell damage that you have, the more damage you deal. So that is why we're grabbing all three points in Aura of Kinship, giving us 15%, uh, 15 flat damage. We're grabbing the 8% base crit, 72 crit avoidance. Uh, one thing to note with the Summon Spriggan is that even though you see its little circle on the ground when he's dead, uh, as long as the circle is there, you're benefiting from all the buffs. So keep an eye out on it and then revive him when you are, when you are safe, basically. So that's why we're grabbing this. Uh, we're grabbing dodge rate per attunement to scale even even further scale uh, the slither node here. And the rest of the node are just for our the summon spriggan tankiness because like he likes to die quite often. Uh, yeah, so here we're talking about like if you don't encounter rage issues, if you want to reach 100 stacks of armor shred. Um, oh yes, when using a controller, this node here, Cobra Launch is like really, really good. Uh, it basically lets you, because of the auto-targeting of controllers, you will kind of like dash towards the target with every melee attack. So this can be pretty fun and yeah, you might want to experiment with it a little bit. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, in the passive here, pretty straightforward stuff. You're grabbing attunement, uh, you're grabbing spell damage because that's what we're, that's what we're using. We are dual wielding and the increased health, this is very uh, common for any, any primalist build. As we know, health is always good for EHP, uh, so you want to grab as much of it as possible. We're grabbing Endurance, we're grabbing some armor here, we're grabbing Attunement and Strength. Uh, this scales our damage and our tankiness. Uh, this is just damage to get to no Rage Decay out of combat. This is basically just quality of life. Um, it, you could play without it, but it's like really nice to like not decay when you're out of combat and not go out of form. We're going to be attack speed, crit chance, and the very important health leech on crit. Trying to get as much health leech as possible. These two points are just to get more companion health. So you get 75% more health on your summon Spriggan. So he doesn't die as often. So you're getting some crit chance here. And the rage gain on crit, super important node. Keep in mind, the build is like does not really function until you get to Rageborn. Because you always go out of form. So um, yeah, try to get here as fast as possible. Grabbing some uh, damage reduction here and some health and endurance. Um, as always, we're grabbing five points into the shaman tree to unlock tornado. So that one is pretty important. Less damage taken from nearby enemies. Two points here just to get the uh, extra melee attack speed buff that we can get. Uh, one point into health because you, you need more points to get to this node here. So aspect of the board duration and then aspect of the board essentially gives you lots of damage reduction as well. And it gives you a little bit of strength and you, you proc it on every like 20% of the chance to proc on melee hit. But uh, this refreshes if you're engaging with mobs. So this is like essentially really, really good to improve your survivability. Um, so yeah, basically how to, how to play the build. You summon your summon Spriggan. You shapeshift into Swarm Melt form. Then you dive on cooldown to stack as many Maelstrom and benefit from, from the buffs. And then you attack with your melee attacks proccing Tornadoes. That's pretty much it. Uh, there's no real, you know, there are certain tips and tricks maybe for arena where you uh, like, you kind of want to hold down on your dive a little bit to be able to engage mobs or stuff like that. But for the most part, you're just like auto attacking till, uh, <laughs> until you can't anymore, right? All right, so let's talk about the gearing now. So we are in the starter gear. First, we're using a, a rune dagger and a katana. Make sure you get the spell damage. This is the most important one. Uh, the rune dagger is nice because you have like, uh, implicit 40 spell damage on it, which is super, super good, right? So just go through here and then you go to the advanced gear. 
So we're getting essentially uh, Legacy of the Quiet Forest as you get the transformation. This and the gloves will essentially make you able to cap your poison and void res and also help with your sustain. Uh, Legacy of the Quiet Forest is also one of the highest armor uh, belt in the game. So because it's a bronze belt and it has 145 flat armor on it as well, really, really good. And then you get into the end game gear here. So this is where it becomes interesting. You can get some good legendaries here. If you get a Cold Navarre's Claim with melee attack speed, this is really great because you get a very, very high roll of a lightning spell crit chance. Uh, you're not getting any of the downsides when reaching full mana to convert to ward because you're using rage. So yeah, yeah this is just like the best that you could possibly get. Uh, so if you have one, try to get melee attack speed on it. You want to get like hybrid health on the belt. You want to get movement speed on the boots. This will increase your movement speed dramatically because you get the you get access to the movement speed from the unique boots as well as like a, like another roll of movement speed. And like movement speed is pretty scarce, and this build does not have that much um, that much mobility. So yeah, this is pretty important. And you go for Aura's Time Glass to become basically a super tank. That this is essentially kind of like a cheat death where if you go below 30% health, you're restored to full health, right? So this is pretty much what we do for the endgame gear. And then in the best in slot here, we have the Stormcarved Testament. So if you manage to get this with LP, uh, it can be incredibly powerful, giving you flat spell damage, lightning penetration, shock chance, attunement, and implicit physical res. So it's really, really good. Um, so yeah, we're going for melee attack speed, lightning damage, and chill on our, on our main hand. On our offhand, make sure that you try to get tier 6 or tier 7 spell damage on it. Get melee attack speed, armor shred, frailty, uh, and you seal the critical strike multiplier. Here you want to grab, um, on the helm, you want to grab the critical strike multi-wall transform, wearable form. Uh, wearable form is only there to increase damage while transform, so we're not actually using wearable. We're just using this because it's the most efficient stat that we can possibly get. Grab increased armor, increased health. Um, same thing goes for the chess piece here. We got, so there's a couple of choices you can do for the chess piece. This is for damage, right? The great wood coat. If you want to be more tanky, you can use the ancestral garb or there's the other one, the wild one that uh, gives you 10% movement speed. All of these are viable. Uh, I just put this one because it synergizes well with the damage for the build. Crit multi, levels of tornado, increased armor, increased health. Um, Legacy of quiet forest. Again, really good belt. Etheris Path, we've got the 30% uh, increased melee attack speed on the gloves. So we're scaling attack speed. We need to reach 100% crit. With the current setup, you reach 100% crit with only one roll of critical strike chance on some of your gear. So I put this on the gloves. You get armor, increased health. And here it's not updated, but the increased minion health is replaced by um, tier seven ward on kill, which is an experimental affix that was introduced with 0.9.2. Uh, if you can get that, it's like it's a guaranteed seal if you get it at tier 7. So yeah, try to get that. Um, so we're using Opal Rings to reduce our cooldown uh, recovery speed and all attributes. Essentially, this makes our dives uh, be shorter uh, on, on a shorter cooldown. So essentially giving you more mobility and more ways to juke enemies. So lightning damage, spell damage, health, and physical res. Lightning damage, spell damage, health, and endurance. You want to cap your endurance here. So for our blessings here, right. Most important one, spell damage leeches health. Uh, this is gonna increase your sustain dramatically. Chances shred lightning res for more damage, necrotic res, and both of the armor rolls for the uh, these two blessings here. All right, then let's talk about the idols. First of all, uh, the Primus has access to really nice idols, which have percentage health and elemental res while transformed, which is a huge number. Uh, these are incredibly good to cap your res, right? So the, we use three of those, right? And then we use one that has chance on melee kill to heal a random minute of full health. This one is really important because it will greatly improve your quality of life to keep your companion alive. And then it ha also has uh, critical strike avoidance. So this thing, well, one of these idols with the critical strike avoidance from one of your min from your uh, from your minion, alongside only one seal, the tier one affix of crit avoidance will essentially cap your crit avoidance. So that is like, those are the big grand, uh, the large idols. We're using one vigorous style idol of life to increase our tankiness with increasing our health pool. 
and then spell damage while transformed and increased cold and lightning damage. We are dealing lightning damage, so this is the one that we use. All right, so that pretty much covers the gearing process. Um, so afterwards, you have the build scaling and end game in written form. If you want to know what you scale for damage and defense, and then a couple of tips and tricks for monolith dungeon and arena. Um, we got the loot filter here. If you right click save link as it will save it as an XML. You put this in your loot filter folder and you'll have it in game. Uh, the video guide is the one I'm making right now and a summary, right? You're a permanent a swarm blade form, uh, swarm blade form, and then you use rage instead of mana. Your arm blade slash uses viper call, which uh, benefits from the serpent strike tree. You spam your melee attacks to stack tornadoes, uh, all of them to cast lightnings, right? And then you dive on cooldown to stack as many maelstrom and get lots of buffs. And slitter is giving you free dodge basically on the um, on the serpent strike tree. Uh, you get a lot of tankiness. And while it's not mandatory, Colnavar's claim is essentially really, really good to unleash the build's potential and free affixes slots on your gear. All right, guys, so that pretty much covers the entire build guide. Uh, I hope you have, a lot, you have a lot of fun with the Lightning Swarm Blade, uh, which is a, a tremendously good build. Uh, and if you have any feedback, comments, post them in the comments below. I'll be reading you guys. I'll be answering questions. And if you want to support me, uh, leave a like, subscribe, comment, all for the YouTube algorithm. And I'll see you guys in the next video.